Hello everyone, I'm Tom Dorado and welcome to our first Bob Simmons Show of the Year. By now most of you know, Oklahoma State wrote a near record-setting defensive performance to an opening night win over Louisiana Lafayette. As usual, we'll have all the highlights for you. We'll also tell you how the Cowboys were able to fight through those stifling August workouts. And in the process, introduce you to the newest member of the OSU Athletic family. And we'll visit with this year's captains at our Get to Know the Cowboys segment. All this and more coming up after our opening timeout. The Bob Simmons Show is brought to you by Phillips 66, the performer. I'm James Halligan, president of Oklahoma State University. Welcome to the Bob Simmons Show. Now to Tom Dorado. Well, indeed, welcome back to the show. Bob, congratulations. Great way to start the year. Cowboys off and winging, but perhaps you can update us on Tony's condition now as you know it today. Uh, thanks, Tom. It was uh, great for this football team to start off with a win, especially at Louisville. Uh, and as you say, obviously, everybody's interested in what Tony's condition is. I talked with uh, the trainer uh, and Tony earlier this morning, and uh, we're going to go through uh, an, an MRR test on Tuesday to really find out the extent of the injury. So uh, I can't sit here and tell you uh, how serious the injury is. Well, we're going to see how other people performed in the uh, game against Louisiana Lafayette. All, all for good to get off on a winning note. And uh, we'll get it right to the highlights. You talk about orange now. That was the well, color right. that night. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we, <clears throat> when, we're, when we're at home, we come out in orange, but it was good to see our fans uh, come out in, a, in, in orange and uh, give us great support. Uh, we, we start off time with the, with the defense. <clears throat> we, we actually won the coin toss and decided to defer and put our defense on the field. And uh, obviously, as you go over the stats on the course of this show, you're going to find out that our defense played well. TK. Right off the bat, come off making a big play, coming off the corner for a loss. Uh, he had an exceptional ball game, as, as about four or five of those guys did. You can see how the defensive team is rallying around them. They come out again for a second play. The thing that we like about our defense is that they swarm to the ball. Right there, you see about seven to eight guys on the ball. Our defensive coaches emphasize that. They run and draw now, and they actually break this. We got some missed tackles, which I think our coaches are going to address. But, Again, you see four or five guys around the ball. We force a punt uh, for three down, and special teams, we talk about that time. Now we got a chance to see Terrence Richardson do a good job of going right back up the middle. Defense got a great stop, and now we get about a 25-yard uh, return, which enabled us to start in great field position. Wasn't this a great <clears throat> example of the way the three phases of the game complement each other? Defense forces a punt get good field position on the return, and the offense pushes it in. Absolutely, because when you can start off uh, on their side of the 50-yard line at the 40, it makes a shorter field, and you come off and, and run Nathan on an inside zone play uh, where he breaks a couple of tackles here. Then we go back and hit him on a swing here, trying to get a first down, uh, and we get close to it. I think we end up uh, either third and one or, or uh, fourth and two. Early in the season, fourth and two call. Come out and put the ball <laughs> in, in Tony's hands. Uh, the offensive line do a good job. We just get it by the by the ball, but it keeps that drive alive. Now we we <clears throat> end up calling a, uh, a a screen here, which did not work out. But Tony's athletic ability uh, did a great job, and uh, naturally they uh, they hit him out of bounds, which gives us a first down. And we go back inside uh, with an inside zone to Nathan. Their offensive line at this point really doing a good job, and uh, big Kevin Brown is really pounding in there hard for four and five. This is all we saw Kevin last night. Yeah, and then uh, we run the option on the goal line, and Tony makes a great decision, and Nathan takes it in. And, and uh, that's that's how it's supposed to be. You come out, your defense stops them. Uh, you take the ball right down for, for the first drive, and uh, we really get started off on, on a great start. Now the defense. Uh, it was hard to block that, that defensive line. I think that's Kevin Williams, uh, one of his first sacks. and. Uh, they come up short, I think, on a well on a third down. Uh, now they're sprinting out. This is a third down play, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, our offense does a defense does a good job of continuing to hold in. We're playing good secondary play. Kenyatta Wright breaks on the ball. We force him back into another punt, uh, which I think that was their second series of mm -hmm. almost three and out. And here it is, special teams again. Terrence makes a good decision. He wants to get upfield. We we talk about not dancing. Uh, on that punt return and make a good decision. But we come back with Jamal and uh, on a draw play, and he immediately breaks one for about uh, 20 yards. And, you know, our offense right now is really doing a good job. Tony makes a good decision, picks up about 15 to 20 more yards. And uh, you see right now we'll cross the 50 again. Tom uh, makes a great throw to, uh, I think that's Howe, that's uh, Ethan Howe. That should have been a penalty there, but it wasn't called for. Here's his fourth and two again. Uh, Tony makes a good decision getting the ball to, 
uh, who is that, Marcellus, mm -hmm. keep our drive alive. So we're back in that their territory again, Tom, and have an opportunity to put points on the board. Any any time you put in that area, you want to try to put points on the board. No stranger to you, 68 times in your since you've been here at Oklahoma State, you've decided to go for it on fourth down. Well, uh, yeah, I guess that's a habit of mine. But uh, we, we end up uh, not making that field goal, mm -hmm. which, you know, is all for not. But, you know, our defense is playing strong. Uh, you see uh, guys are, uh, around the ball again. Uh, they throw a good screen here. Uh, that's Chris Massey, but he recovers. And we got guys just all around the ball carrier. They give us the ball right back. Uh, we're back in a punt return situation. Now here, uh, Terrence makes a good decision. He gets mm -hmm. out. Uh, we're across the 50 again here. Uh, he forces us out of bounds. So this is really our third series where we got an opportunity to put more points on the board here. Uh, Tony gets hit at this point. Uh, that's where he gets the injury uh, and a good tackle by Nathan. But you can see the linebacker jumping over a blocker and really trying to make a play on our quarterback and grabs his leg, uh, which is uh, which is what was not a malice play. It was a good play. Uh, but uh, we, we don't come out of any points again. Now B.J. Tiger comes in and throws a swing pass. Here we are again across the 50 yard line. Mm -hmm. So you can count the number of times That's four the that uh, we're in position to put points on the board. BJ does a nice job of scrambling. Uh, gets in a situation right now that clock is running down. It's important to tell our guys to get out of bounds. We mm -hmm. practice this. This is a miscue uh, with our front line. And again, we squander another time to put points on the board. So uh, it's good to see the team playing. We move the ball, but uh, you, you can't give those opportunities away when you're in the red zone. Give us the mood <clears throat> in the locker room now at halftime. Cowboys up. You never got the impression that uh, Louisiana could ever move the football against this defense. Tony's out. What's going on? Well, now? you know, our, our defense at the first half was very, very dominant. And, and obviously we felt like that uh, we had to come back out offensively and try to execute. We didn't know about Tony at that time, but we knew that uh, B.J. would probably come back out. And uh, that first series didn't go as well. We went three and out, but as you can see, uh, our defense. defense was all over their ball carries all night long and getting up celebrating one of Jack Golden, I thought, uh, played a heck of a ball game. Uh, you can see them scrambling here. Uh, they go three and out uh, on this series here. They're, they're forcing a scramble play here. He throws it out of bounds. Uh, they kick us the ball back. We almost uh, blocked this kick. We go after it. Uh, T. Rich gets it on the 10. He, get, he has to. Yeah, again, he's got to stay with the return. The return is a middle return. We ask him not to dance here. This is a great job by uh, B.J. to Marcellus. Uh, we come back out on a uh, third down. Third downs are key situations. B.J. does a good job of keeping the drive alive and putting us in good field position. We come back with an inside uh, draw to Nathan. He gets about seven yards. Uh, again, we come back on a swing, but his read takes him up top because of their safeties, mm -hmm. and this is a good decision. Uh, we take the ball in the end zone, long run here. Again, uh, we talk about celebration, and obviously uh, when that the officials want you to celebrate with your teammate, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, this cost us a long and extra point. And that was point. the interpretation. That was the interpretation. Okay, so all of a sudden now Sidness is going to have to kick a 35-yard 35 35 extra yeah, point. Right. All we ask our players to do uh, is to uh, come back and give the official the ball and uh, that they're going to call that rule this year, and so the players got to understand uh, that uh, uh, if they celebrate, come and celebrate with their teammates. Okay, 14 nothing. Go Cowboy back defense on his, is here's still TK right again, TK, and I think that's Thomas mm -hmm. coming off the corner. He forces them up. I don't know how they figure this. Probably uh, they, they end up giving it to, to Thomas, but mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure TK gets a half a sack. Well, we'll ask him about that later on. So. <laughs> Hey, coming off the corner, uh, I think that's the that's Thomas forces a mm -hmm. uh, a, a bad pitch. Uh, again, our defense is all over the place. Guys are just swarming, making. You can see the quickness in this defense, uh, and uh, we end up getting the ball back on a punt. Uh, he kicks it over our heads, but we come back with an offensive drive here. Uh, we flipped it to Jamal. Jamal makes a nice run down the sideline here, uh, gets us about 10 yards. We go back inside. Uh, he does a good job of cutting this back, and he's out the door. Uh, nobody's going to catch him, although they're closing, but he makes it to the end zone. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't going to get caught. He wasn't going to get caught. Uh, yeah. Again, that makes it 21, uh, and we feel like that right now we got uh, a, a little bit of the game under control. And that was our Power Play of the Week, brought to you by OG&E. OG&E, proud again to bring you the OG&E Greatest Cowboy Fan Search. Log on to your chance to win big at www.og&e.com. og and &E power at the speed of life, and he's showing a little bit of that speed right there. Right there, he? right. Well, the Cowboys <clears throat> in command now of the scoreboard, and 
The defense, I know coaches like to say this, but defense could dictate tempo in an entire game. And from Series 1, I think even the Raging Cajuns, they're going to have a long night trying to move Well, I, I think our defensive coaches as is, is well as when you see from the sideline that uh, our defense had the game under control. And it was a matter of, of our offense really trying to uh, get, get started. You can see here on special teams, a punt safe situation, uh, which, which turns into a, a fall on the ball. But we actually, we ended up getting it. They wanted to scoop and score. We're in great field position here uh, for another score here. Uh, and uh, Reggie gets hit, takes it down, but we get a holding call. Uh, and it moves the ball back, and uh, B.J. makes a nice throw here to Marcellus, and he takes it back down into uh, the 11-yard line. Again, we come out with three points this particular time, but here we are in, in an area where we want to come out with uh, seven, and if you compare it, to, we were in that area the first half compared to the second half. Probably should have had a little bit more points. Uh, a few new fellas in there. Ben Bowling the comes in and makes a nice throw to, to Gabe Lindsay. Uh, makes another nice throw to uh, uh, Willie, Young. Uh, Willie Young, and uh, this is our new play we put in for our quarterback. His quarterback missed the handoff, didn't run the draw, uh, but Ben made a good decision. Now we come back to, uh, I think that Tim. is Tim Burroughs. That game is over with, and uh, Jerry Baldwin and I are pretty good friends. and know him uh, from coaching at LSU, and the important thing is that we did come out with victory. There are some things that we have to correct before we get uh, ready for our next ball game. Isn't that basically what a coach takes away from an opener, something to improve upon? <laughs> You're right, Tom. What we do is, is we look at that film, evaluate it, look at the things that we did good, and look at the things that we got to get ready for, for that next ball game. And we'll talk about that next ball game later in the show. You know, that searing August sun made it a chore just to walk from the air-conditioned office to the car. Consider how uncomfortable the Cowboys felt during the preseason workouts. A tip of the hat goes to the OSU athletic training staff, a new coordinator of athletic training and sports medicine, Terry Noonan. They are the subject of this week's two-minute drill, which is brought to us by the American Residential Group. Well, Terry, despite the searing heat in August, it appears everybody got through the hot spell in good shape. We didn't have too much of a problem. We had less of a problem than last year. Of course, it wasn't as hot, but we had to IV just a couple people one day, usually the first part of practice, but after that, Everything went good. We got in the Gatorade, got in the water. We didn't have any problems. We'll go over heat exhaustion, things like that. And then every day we take a wet bulb, dry bulb breathing, put it on a chart, tells us where we are as, as far as the danger level, how far into that. And then I may have to go to Coach Simmons and say, okay, maybe we need a mist tent period here or a water break there or, or a cutback and things like that. It's just all communication. And I think we've used that to our advantage. Of course, in Iowa, I wasn't exposed to that, but here, we found as soon as someone starts to cramp, we get them in there, get their core temperature down. In the long run, we don't have to IV in sometimes. So we use it medically usually as soon as we can. It's helped us out a lot. You mentioned you came from Iowa. Tell us how you got here, what your first impressions of Oklahoma State are. Well, originally I met a few people like Dave Martin when we hosted the USA National Wrestling Championships, NCAA. And at that time, the position was open and I talked to him about it. I was fortunate enough to interview him, met him. And and Coach Simmons and people like that. And then it came open against, again this year, I was interested in trying to advance my career. I thought I'd done about everything I could at Northern Iowa at, at that level. Um, and I saw some things here I thought I could offer. So I applied for the job and was fortunate enough to get it. Terry, personally, I'm glad you joined the staff. We finally have somebody here who has more gray hair than I have. That happens at times, but I don't know if I have more. You know what, Terry does have gray hair. He wasn't but, that, uh, that wasn't very nice. I, I, I tell you what, he has that pickle juice, which I'm really trying to figure out, but he's an excellent addition to our staff. Uh, and uh, his philosophy is for the safety of our players. And they took him right through those hot days. They were, yes, man, they, they were did. hot out there, no question. As promised, <clears throat> we'll talk with Captains Adam Davis and Terrell Knowles on the home National Bank. Get to know the Cowboys segment. We'll do that when we return to the Bob Simmons Show. Welcome back to the show. This is our Get to Know the Cowboys segment brought to you by Ron Rakes and the team at Home National Bank, 324 South Duck in Stillwater. Fellas, let's talk about the atmosphere at Lewis Field Saturday night. You know, Tom, one of the things that really impressed me is that we've been talking about the wear orange here at Oklahoma State since I've gotten here. And obviously, I think that the players are excited uh, when they come out because when we're at home, we wear orange. But just to see it spread over in the, in the, in the, with the fans. Adam, what do you think about that? 
Uh, there was definitely a lot of orange out there last <laughs> night, <laughs> and it's really it's really exciting for us to run out of that tunnel and look up in the stands and have a, a packed house and just looking and just a sea of orange and really makes it all worthwhile. <coughs> Just reiterate on what Adam said. Uh, the energy was there, and to look up in the stands and see all the orange and stuff, it made everybody just, you know, the team together feel feel real good and stuff. Know that the fans was behind us and seeing everybody in orange, then we're out there on the field in all orange. It makes everybody feel real good. See, we have to make Lewis feel a difficult place to play, uh, and with all that orange and all that support, and uh, that really hypes our players up and. Uh, get them to play at, at, their, at their top level. I'd say we're on a good track, 15 straight wins over non-conference opponents at home. That's right, and it's due to these young men right here. You know, the fans say, well, do the players actually hear us? Do they know we're up there? And that's kind of an ongoing battle. What do you think? Uh, I think it is, it, the fans make a real big difference. Like, we have the opposing, opposing team down maybe like third and three, and, you know, the players get to going, raising their hands, you know, yeah. try to get the <laughs> crowd behind them and stuff, so. When the crowd is out there yelling and behind us, makes us want to play harder and get the other team stopped so we can punt the ball and give it back to our offense. You hear them too, don't you? Yeah, I, uh, I noticed one time last night, I think offense was kind of stalling out and the fans got behind us and started the orange, the power, the orange, <laughs> the power. And I think we went ahead and pushed on in. It really just helps lift everybody up when they hear the support out there. Well, we appreciate both these guys being with us. This is going to be something we do each and every week. TK, Adam, appreciate you coming down on all your right. day off. We're going to be back to wrap this all up after this final timeout. Well, we are back. It's time for this week's <coughs> question from oakstate.com, presented by Southwestern Bell, the question for Bob Simmons. And our question this week is one of these captain situations. They want to know <laughs> what about the choice of captains. Who makes that selection? Well, uh, what we do is let the team vote and, uh, for our, our captains. And normally, uh, our captains have been seniors, guys that have been around there for four or five years, and uh, guys that have been a part of the program uh, for at least uh, two years get the opportunity to vote. Well, if you have a question for Bob Simmons, log on to the OSU's official athletic website at oakstate.com and participate in the Southwestern Bell Ask Coach Bob Simmons contest. Now, as we're speaking of www's and .com, you have your own website, and you can log on to that at www.bobsimmons.com. And what would they find on that website? Well, uh, they'll find information that, uh, that's pertaining to the program, uh, about our players, uh, about some different family issues that, uh, that players may come up. They'll find a game-by-game a, a game or a day-by-day -day report on really how our game preparation is going and uh, uh, obviously uh, information that uh, about how our graduation rate, mm -hmm. how our players are doing. Uh, really, it's the personal side of really what goes on in football as well as what, uh, what the results of the game, why the decisions were made, and information like that. Basically, you'd be taken behind the scenes of the program by the guy who knows the program <laughs> best, right? Well, you know, sometimes you, you read the paper and you really get, it's, it's printed a little bit different than, than really what the coach is going to say, but uh, they can find out things about the, my family, so. Okay, Tulsa, Saturday morning now, 11.30 kickoff. Oklahoma State, Tulsa, year in and year out, always a big-time rival. Well, good in-state battle. You know, uh, we went over there last year and didn't play as well as we'd like to. And obviously, it's, as I said, in-state, and, and they're coming into Louisville, and, and our kids will be ready to play this ball game. Overall, other <clears> than <throat> Tony, how did we come out physically? Well, other than Tony, I think uh, Kevin Brown got some bumps and bruises, but I do expect him to be back, uh, I think, based on what the trainers are going to say to me tomorrow. Uh, other than that, we just we got guys with ice bags on them. Uh, <laughs> but uh, tomorrow's a holiday, and uh, we'll, we'll get started up uh, that next day. Congratulations on that first win. Thanks again. <clears throat> That's all the time we have for this week's show. Join us again next week for Bob Simmons, Adam Davis, Terrell Knowles, our entire crew here at Educational Television Services, Tom Dorado. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>